Hi everyone, I'm Maddie. Welcome to today's QuickSight Learning Series session. Um, today we'll be talking about QuickSight costs and usage in the Kudos dashboard for AWS users. Excellent. Thank you very much, Maddie. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining today on this QuickSight Learning Series session. Um, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go, I'm going to do a quick introduction, go through the agenda and get going. So first of all, um, uh, again, Maddie, thanks for introducing for the introduction. My name is Ramon Lopez. I am a um, principal solutions architect here with AWS. I've been with the QuickSight team for almost two years now, coming up to my two year mark. I've been in the BI and analytics space for over 10, the last 10 years of my career. Um, and I do have a, a background in finance, economics, and accounting, um, which I think has uh, helped me a lot in this in, in this BI world that we live in. So a little bit more about myself. I currently reside in um, in sunny Los Angeles with my with my wife and two children and dog. I'm an avid surfer. I like the outdoors world. Um, but enough of that. Let's focus on today's core topic. And uh, the title of the, of the session today is QuickSight Cost and Usage in the Kudos Dashboards. So we're going to talk about what is Kudos, why do I need Kudos, what can I do with Kudos, and what does it have to do with QuickSight? And then we're going to talk about some new, um, new dashboards, some new analytics capabilities that are available inside of Kudos. And then we're going to kind of brainstorm a little bit on what are our options beyond Kudos. So without um, without further further delays, I'm going to just jump in and start going through um, the main topic of the day, which is about kudos and QuickSight. So what is kudos? Kudos is a, a package. It's a set of dashboards that are going to allow some capabilities. They're going to allow you to, to drive a cost of work culture within the organization. They're going to help you understand the implications of different um, cost options that are available in AWS that maybe you're not maximizing the value of, maybe it's whether it's the savings plans, reserved instances. And ultimately, it's about being able to analyze cost and usage data across all of your AWS services and across multiple payer accounts, all in one single location. And it's about optimizing. It's about, it's not about saving money. It's not about reducing costs, but it's about optimizing your the, the services that you're using for, from a cost perspective and making sure you're getting the most bang for your buck when working with AWS resources. Ultimately, um, it's, it's about having all this in one place as well. And that's what becomes really powerful and valuable in the market. There's a, um, other solutions out there um, that are, can be either really expensive and or require a lot of effort to set up. This is a really sweet spot of being very robust, very in-depth, but also being um, op optimized from a cost perspective, as you would expect. So trying to understand what, what, are we, what are we trying to measure here? What does good look like? It, it's common topic of a conversation is understanding your cloud adoption journey and the reality with cloud adoption and your cloud adoption journey is and what we've seen with most of our customers is that usage increases over time, period. You start discovering new services, you start rolling out new capabilities throughout the organization and you find yourself using it, using different services and, and spending more money. But the reality is um, and what we want to try to get to, what our goal is, and this applies to any type of um, business operation, is really understanding what our unit cost is and ensuring that as you spend more, as you use more AWS services, that your unit cost is going down. And that's that's kind of the, the, the premise in economies of scale um, that we try to attain. And it, it it's also possible with optimization within um, AWS and all your services. And over time, what we see our customers able to do is really hone in on that unit cost and the unit costs are they're different depending on who you are and what you do and reducing that unit cost over time as your usage increases. And what the kudos package allows you to do is really kind of hone in on those costs and focus on different optimization strategies. And what it what are, what are those what do those look like and what does good look like and how do we manage these optimizations over time? Well, there's a lot of different categories or possibilities to optimize your cost in AWS. 
And, you know, when you look at it in this chart, it's, it's a nice way to look at it because we're seeing that as you start using more and more, there's different optimization strategies that you can that you can do that are going to help you reduce your total cost um, as you're using more services. So, you know, starting off at the beginning, you're traditional on premises, you have you know the highest level of cost in theory. Um, and as you go through the motions of lifting and shifting, right sizing, managing elasticity of your services, and going deeper and deeper and deeper into the different optimizations that are possible, whether it's picking, changing the pricing models that you're using for different services and choosing the right one, optimizing storage, transitioning to serverless architectures wherever possible, leveraging the managed services instead of uh, mounting your own services in the lift and shift. That's how we get to being a truly optimized organization within AWS while reducing that unit cost and increasing usage at the same time. So our team here has built this package called Kudos, the Cloud Intelligence Dashboard. And, and what is it exactly? It's a bundle of, of, of um, configurations that can be deployed via a CloudFormation stack, or depending on if you have multiple accounts, you're gonna deploy stacks on each account to manage the, the data transfers. And the key things that it's easy to use, easy to deploy, it can take you, if you have one account, it can take you 20 minutes, 30 minutes to deploy it. It's secure, it leverages all of the um, core AWS services and you don't have to run any outside um, packages or any special agents, everything stays within the organization, within the ecosystem, and everything is monitored and, you know, abiding by the security standards of AWS services. It's very deep, detailed, in-depth. So it, you can look at high-level cost information, or you can go very granular and look at, you know, individual EC2 instances, the specific S3 buckets, taking a look at, um, all the different details of what's being used so that once you see something that you want to look to optimize once you see something that you want to dig into you can go down and down into the grain of the data into the grain of that cost and usage to understand what is causing that change and what do i need to do to to optimize it to adjust for it and to make sure that we're not um over utilizing resources and finally, the whole solution, the whole package is very cost effective. Um, again, we're using core AWS services and uh, you know, it comes down to in most organizations a few hundred bucks a month to get this, these dashboards in place. Of course, if you have more accounts and more, more, um, more pay accounts and more data, the cost can slightly go up. But at the end of the day, it's, it's very negligible in comparison to some of the other third party services that exist in the market today. So what comes with Kudos? So Kudos is a whole, it's a whole package with some additional add-ons. So we're that's starting with the whole, the whole, when I say whole package, I'm referring to the foundational, um, the foundational template that is gonna be rolling out these, these first three core dashboards. You have your cost intelligence dashboard, KPI dashboard and Kudos, and they all start at a very high, kind of high level going down into more detailed um, the cost the, the foundational models are really focused on executives and finance and procurement teams like those finops teams that are managing costs at a high level but um, in addition to these foundational dashboards we have some advanced dashboards that can be deployed either with the main foundation or added after the fact and they they are going to align with other aws services so you have your compute optimiz optimizer dashboards that are looking at um, you know right sizing opportunities and wasted wasted um, resources spent. We look, we got cost anomalies dashboard, which is new, which leverages the cost anomaly detection capabilities to identify spikes for you or any any changes in your cost in your usage data that might require your attention. And lastly, here in the advanced section, we have um, if you're working with a trusted advisor, um, you know we have Tau dashboards that go hand in hand with the trusted advisor service, as well as the well-architected pillars to provide the security teams with additional details on, on, on what's happening in the organization and a different perspective on those uh, the, uh, the trusted advisor recommendations. So as we can see, there's a dashboard for everyone here. 
whether you're, you know, the C-level or the owner or the CDO of the organization trying to look at your, your spend on technology down to the finance team, down to actual product owners, engineering teams, operation teams that want to look at what they're spending and how they're spending it and how they can manage it, how they can optimize it, how they can reduce costs where necessary. Um, so it's a little bit of everything for everybody. And we've actually continued adding dashboards and adding additional information. So we'll see, this is, I wanna, I wanna show this as part of the demo. We have a cloud intelligence dashboard for, for Azure. So we have a lot of customers that are working with um, some multi-cloud scenarios and we're looking um, to give them one single place where they can include the cost of not just all their AWS services, but if they're using Azure for some services or they're migrating from Azure, get a perspective on, on their Azure cost. We have an AWS Marketplace dashboard. So if you're looking at um, analyzing your, your spend and your usage of services through Marketplace, we're, we've got you covered there. The Trends dashboard is an executive high-level summary, just giving you trends over time. And finally, personally, um, one of the more exciting for me, I, I used to live and breathe sustainability, um, and not so much in my current life, but I, I miss it, and it's really good to see at a high level, AWS really focused on sustainability. And then here at a very granular level, giving tools to all of our customers to monitor, to measure, to track the, the sustainability metrics that matter to them. So again, this is, you know, Kudos is not actually not quite sure how long Kudos has been around, um, but it's evolved at a pace that's kind of dramatic you know every quarter we see new versions available we'll talk about upgrading in a, in a little bit but every every you know every few months we see new dashboards new kpis new metrics optimizations and improvements available to update your set of kudos dashboards so what happens like how does how does kudos do all this in such an easy fashion we'll take a quick look at the architecture um, that that is deployed when you deploy kudos and it comes down to data obviously um, you have data sources and there's a few different data sources that we're looking at together to come up with these these dashboards and these optimizations so first we start if you if you just deploy the basic kudos dashboards the foundational models it's just going to use the cost and usage report um, so the cost and usage report, if you're not if you're not familiar with it, it is a it's a feature in the billing area that allows you to um, not just you know we have a cost explorer that gives you the ability of simply looking at some of the costs through the console, but the cost and usage reports even gives you the ability of exporting some of that data, and we're we're using we're leveraging that exported data as the as the base data set that is going to be used um, for the Kudos dashboard. As you add some of the advanced and additional modules to Kudos, we're going to be pulling in different pieces of information to support those dashboards. So, for example, we pull in the, comp the compute optimizer data. We pull in data from the, from Tau, from Trusted Advisor. We pull in data from that cost anomaly detection module in the console. We can pull in some budget data, so you can look at actuals versus your budget data as you're defining an AWS budget. The additional side, we have some information from AWS config. So when you have large organizations, multiple organizational units, you want to grab all that data from AWS config. S3 storage lens, giving deeper visibility into your data lake um, consumption and usage. And finally, um, and this is more of a, a custom flow or a customization, but it's, I think, a critical customization that organizations need to put in place. And it's, it's pulling in your third-party data pulling in whether it's your internal organization data, your accounting data, some of your HR data to map users to the different features, um, and then maybe some of the custom logic on how you manage product projects and tie them to um, to your to your chart of accounts, your, your accounting system, and your accounting processes. Pulling in all this data is also possible. And then once you, you know, the data is, is a foundation, um, we, as part of the um, package as part of the CloudFormation script. It's deploying and using S3 and Athena as your data lake for all this data, on top of which will exist Amazon QuickSight. In QuickSight, we have uh, as, our, as our BI solution that is empowering users to analyze and explore all this data. It's going to deploy the, the different dashboards and make everything accessible through the QuickSight console. And we got to remember that in QuickSight, it's not just easy to 
see and consume these dashboards, but it's also easy to customize, to tweak, to massage these dashboards and make them your own to fit your own organizational needs. And ultimately, we have decision makers that are going to be taking advantage of this. So, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier, there's a wide variety of users that can take advantage of these capabilities going starting from finance and procurement, which is normally the finance and executives are the, are the first level of, hey, well, well, how much are we spending? Let's take a look at it at a very detailed level. But I think where it gets interesting is where you get to empower engineering leads, product owners, security teams to access their data, to access their usage and cost information. and and kind of be owners of their own world, manage their own PMLs, and be able to optimize their, their operations on their own. Okay, very good. So that kind of covers the, the initial introduction I wanted to do on, on the Kudos dashboards. Now we're gonna take a look at individual uh, reports, and we're gonna do a quick little demonstration on each one, and, and I'm gonna highlight some really interesting nuggets of information that we can find in each one of these reports. So we're going to start off with a KPI dashboard. Um, and this is, a, a, to me, it's one of the most interesting of the dashboards. It's good for everybody in terms of, you know, what users want to use this, this dashboard. Um, it lets you track optimization, um, specific KPIs that have been defined by the Kudos team. Um, it lets you define what your goal is for those KPIs. And then ultimately, it's about forecasting estimated future savings. So I'm going to quick do a quick demonstration here of, of this, this dashboard. So here we have the KPI tracker. So like most dashboards that you're going to find, you're going to have a variety of tabs here. Um, every dashboard is going to have an about tab. The about tab will give you high level information on the dashboard, the version of the dashboard and some other like notes and instructions about the dashboard. With this KPI dashboard in particular, we have the ability of defining, like I mentioned, setting those KPI goals at the organizational level. So we have some high level optimization KPIs like EC2, SPOC goals or S3 standard storage going into some um, on demand KPIs. And here, every dashboard that we include is going to have um, assumptions, glossary and some text explanation of the optimization options that we have available. And we'll see here that as an example, we have all these different detailed breakdowns of what these different KPI metrics are. So first you go in and you set your KPI goals. Then you can actually track how you're doing against these goals. So for example, you can look at a high level spend, but then going down into individual, these, these KPIs that we set up in the previous screen, where you can define what that percentage goal is. And then you can track how you're hitting those goals over time. So, for example, if I take a look at here um, at RDS Graviton usage, we see that we kind of started off in December with a low percentage, but it's, it's you know, going up and going up. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting closer to hitting that goal. Um, you are able to do this at a high level for all these different KPIs that we're tracking. But this is where it gets fun is when you can dig into specific services. So for example, here, we're going to look at S3. We're going to try to find some potential savings in S3. So we see here some kind of savings and assumptions that we, that we define that helps us understand what is savings look like. Now going down and looking at these S3 standard tables, um, we have these resource IDs that are defining the, like what, what the buckets are, but what, what gets interesting is here on the right hand side where we see potential saving um from changing the different um s3 configurations that we have today um and when you, you see how we quantify those savings you're able to sort for example by resources that have the most potential savings because we're not using any any life cycle strategies or other savings options and this one for example we have a 44 dollar potential savings so those those are the things that these dashboards help you do prioritize optimization um strategies that you can take and and kind of set you on your path to go in and optimize reduce costs and implement different standards of the organization so this is the kpi dashboard um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the next dashboard which is the kudos dashboard so this kudos dashboard is more focused on devops it managers and it's really letting you drill into specific 
um, resources and looking at that cost and usage and looking at those recommendations. So we'll, again, we'll go ahead and we'll take another quick little demo of this Kudos dashboard. So um, I, would, I do want to highlight that all of these demo dashboards that I'm showing today, except for what I'll show at the end, are publicly available and they're all available via the the um, the kudos um, well architected framework um, landing page that I'll show in a few minutes. So everything is publicly accessible and um, we'll make sure to um, to share these links in the chat in a little bit. So here in the kudos dashboard, we see um, it starts really high level looking at billing summary at a, at a high level, you know, how is what are we trending? What regions are most popular? Um, then going at some trends over time by account, the CR spends, but I think where this really, you know, I think seeing the high level is important. It's important for executives and important to seeing the trends over time. But where it gets interesting is see how we have tabs for different services. In this case, I'm going to focus on kind of data transfer cost, which I think is like, it's like, it's a cost category that, um, kind of goes under the radar a little bit. And it provides opportunities to looking at your architecture, looking at your, your analytics and data um, flows and making sure that they're optimal from a cost perspective. So if I go ahead and take a peek at my data transfer and networking. So first of all, it gives some high level, like always, some high level recommendations. Um, and then it goes down to, you know, where is the money being spent on these data transfer types? And we see here all the different categories and you can, you can use these as filters. So if I wanna look at, for example, region to inter internet or region to region, uh, maybe we deployed in a region and there's, a, there's an increase in cost and we don't know where it's coming from. Many times it's coming from this data transfer category. And we're able to go ahead and look at the data transfers by service over time. But I think more, I think my, my favorite art, um, chart here is looking at the details of it. So we see here the dollar amounts, we see here um, the different services and being able to open up the usage and seeing, hey, this Lambda is that's region, most of the cost is coming on a region to region basis and be able to kind of drill in to those specific costs and see um, where it's coming from or even use it as a filter to kind of look at further the further charts. Now I'm looking at Lambda, I filter for Lambda and now I'm seeing what are my data transfer operations by account by the by different um by different account numbers what are my data transfer daily gigabytes per operation and you just keep on dealing in no this doesn't have that much more data but you can keep on kind of drilling into and understanding hey where are those data transfer costs coming from and then it's not just data transfer we can do the same thing for different databases s3 storage compute etc all in one dashboard this is also where we're going to at the end of the session take a deep dive into the quick site specific dashboard um, there's a brand new analytics tab here that will give you insight into quick an analytics specific costs, more focus on the on QuickSight itself. Okay, so this is the, the Kudos dashboard. We're going to continue looking at the other dashboards. So next we have the Compute Optimizer. So this one is, again, um, good for DevOps and IT managers, and it's about right sizing. It's about making sure that you have the right um, you know, right compute, the right type of uh, redshift, the right type of um, EC2s for the jobs that are being performed. And it has recommendations for individual resources. And that, that, in this part, that's in this demo, that's my favorite part of this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the dashboard. So here we have the compute optimizer dashboard. First, you see a kind of a high level um, potential savings. So this one is, it's, you know, it's telling us that there's 707 um dollars that are you know, seven hundred seven thousand dollars and that are potential savings in this account it's kind of breaking out what are the modules where those savings are found whether it's an ec2 ebs lambda auto scaling it has different findings that are just going to define the different findings and ultimately um, you can drill down into those specifics my favorite here is taking a look at ec2 instances and again, like always on the dashboard, we start at a high level. I have 10,000 instances going. I'm, this dashboard's finding half a million dollars in potential savings, excluding auto scaling that could be achieved. How, what is those $500,000? And then we have the ability of digging into that. We see here that um, we can see that 32% uh, of it, them are uh, over provisioned. 
Um, and then 34% are actually under provision. So I'm guessing that over provisioning is where we're going to find most of that cost potential savings. We see the potential savings over time. We see the potential savings by account. I like, you know, filtering and focusing on specific accounts. So this one account for 10, you know, seems to have the most potential savings. So I'm going to click on it to filter my entire dashboard to focus on that account. And if I scroll all the way kind of to the bottom of the dashboard, we'll see here this pivot table that says select instance. And here we see a breakdown by account. I filter to only one account. We see all the different instances, all the, in this case, these are EC2 instances that are available and the potential savings for them. So again, this gives you the ability to really drill down into the nitty gritty. I want to click on one specific instance, this first one that comes up, Brandy, and it's telling me, hey, my finding on this instance is that it's over provisioned. It's not actually giving me a specific reason. Some of them do give you a, a more detailed reason. This one isn't. But then where it gets fun is it shows you the different options that we're recommending that quantify that $1,400 in savings. And it's telling you right now you have a C5N 9X large. Um, uh, you're paying for on demand with 36 CPUs and 96 gigs of memory. But your maximum CPU usage is 6%. That is very low for such a big machine. So we have some recommendations here on how you can downsize that machine and save some, some some cash. So we have three different recommendations that the system is, is, is highlighting here and the savings for each one. And you're still, you know, very low max CPU on all of them. But that doesn't end there. For this specific resource that is selected, I'm able now to see some additional detail. You know, first it's telling me how, how long has this has been over provision and it's highlighting here in this color that it's been over provision at least for the last you know three or four months, um, ending in June 28, 2023. Now I want to take a look at some of the specific um, you know measures available for that for that machine. So we're looking at max CPU, max memory, and kind of really what's happening in that machine. So not only is it giving us how much we're spending, it's giving us a finding that you're over provision, it's giving us a recommendation, but it also gives us the ability of kind of looking at what's happening inside of that machine. I think this is really powerful for an administrator, for you know, product owners, FinOps teams that are looking to understand where is where where is that where's the AWS bill coming from? This gives you the visibility into everything that you need. Continuing here, we're going to take a look at the next few set of dashboards. So that was a compute optimizer. Then we're going to look at that trusted advisor organization dashboard. And then this one is really focused on um, cost optimization, as you can imagine, like most of these are. Um, this one, again, is great for DevOps IT managers. And you see all those flags over time for the trusted advisor. That trusted advisor is populating and, again, gives you the ability to um, take action on underutilized resources, security issues, and other issues that, that the Tau is identifying for you. So taking a look at this dashboard here. Um, so this is what the Tau dashboard looks like. We have a summary sheet. We have, um, and then we have a tab for each one of those categories in Tau, security, security hub checks, cost optimization. Um, taking a look at security here, for example, focusing on um, IAM access key rotation, and then highlighting, you know, it looks like you're doing a pretty decent job of rotating your keys. None of them are in red. I am password policies. Uh, it looks like for certain organizations, the password policy is not enabled. So it's recommended that you optimize multi-factor authentication. So these are just standard, um, well-architected framework um, recommendations that are being um, highlighted to you as, as you know, things that you can take action on to make it more, make your environment more secure. I like to dig into here the, the cost optimization and again, looking at low utilization um, for, C, for EC2 instances, for example. So here it's looking at, you know, EC2 instances that are not being utilized um, at, their, at their maximum capacity and you can filter it by, by, by focus. Um, you can focus on different instance families and keep digging in and looking for those potential cost savings. Same thing applies to EBS volumes, load balancers, redshift clusters, 
lambda functions that have a high error rates, unassociated elastic IP addresses that are not being used that can be eliminated. These are all things that um, are critical to take a look at and make sure that as an administrator for UWS that you're following the guidelines that we can recommend. Continuing on, we have their cost intelligence dashboard. This one is a little more high level. It's good for finance and executives and taking a look at unit costs and savings over time. Um, I think this is more focused on kind of savings plans, spot instances and reserved instances, and just making sure that you're right, like you're, you're paying with the right, um, right models for each of those different services that have those, those potential options. So taking a look at this dashboard again, this is like the high, the, I think that one of the best kind of high level um, perspectives, looking at the billing summary and the cost summary. But then here we, we got the ability of drilling deeper into different compute storage. My favorite, personally, my favorite dashboard, my favorite sheet on this dashboard is the Optics Explorer. The Optics Explorer is a dashboard that has a lot of different filters. You're going to see how we have a lot of different ways to filter your data. And it's going to hone in and look at um, high level spend by services, but then be able, you know, giving you the ability of drilling into the detail um, on those services by account. And then um, just, you get the most grain across all of your different costs. And you can use these filters to help you focus on specific services, specific categories, um, specific operations, etc. So again, this is the Optics Explorer is really interesting, gives you a visibility into a lot of different things, helping you focus in on what you're looking for and find that those nuggets that you need. So what does it take to implement Kudos? So, um, you know, Kudos has been around for a while. I'd like to assume that, that many of you that are here have already maybe implemented Kudos, but if not, Kudos is very easy, easy to implement. We're going to share this deck with you all so you can use these slides. But we're going to, first, we have a link here for the public demo that you saw. Those are the different dashboards that I highlighted here. They're all accessible through the internet. Um, you can access, and I'm going to give you a quick little tour of the, what the, the Cloud Intelligence Dashboard Work Architected Labs that includes all the instructions and the tools and the CloudFormation templates that you need to deploy all of these dashboards. Your account team is always available there to help with deployment and other questions and for escalation routes, whether it's through the, directly to the, to the Kudos team or if it's something specific to QuickSight, there's ways to always reach us, a specialist that can support you in these in these challenges. And then finally, um, we, the, the team has built and maintains a YouTube channel that has a lot of great videos highlighting new features, new capabilities, and different ways to, to get value out of kudos a few quick success stories so we have um a, i don't know the exact number the team keeps track of it we have thousands of customers that have deployed and leveraging kudos every day um one of the one of the nice names and the nice stories that we like to highlight is is dolby dolby is a um everyone knows the name um in terms of audio um they're the leaders in audio technology and you know they've deployed kudos and they're leveraging and specifically the, the architecture director adobe is using the kudos dashboards to optimize the spend in the different categories and different services that they're, that they're using um it's a great story great customer one of the thousands that is using kudos to, to maximize value you see a nice quote there from from the from the director and on kind of how they're um using um kudos and and you know what the benefits have been for them i think the nice story there is where it says how they've identified a misconfiguration in kubernetes that was creating an excessive amount of inter um, inter inter zone traffic um they eliminated seven thousand dollars a month in inter az costs in a single account um there's these opportunities are out there and our goal with kudos is to help our customers find them another another good story panda doc um, they handle a lot of the um, contract online contracts and they've also deployed kudos in particular they're focused on the trusted advisor flags um, that help them right size ec2 instances across organization 
So they're, they're another customer that are very excited and happy using, using Kudos. And finally, um, EDF is also another customer that is using um, the they set up private marketplaces across many different orgs, 450 accounts. And you can imagine the, the nightmare that it is to manage 450 accounts, specifically the cost aspect of it. So having one place, one dashboard, one data lake that includes the cost information for that is, is just invaluable. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about how can QuickSight help you get more out of Kudos? So there's some QuickSight core features that um, you can use, deploy, and really get more out of the Kudos. So we're going to talk about real low security. We're going to talk about tags. We're going to talk about alerts and reports distribution. And we're talking about using third-party data. So first of all, role level security. So Kudos and Kerr has data on all of your accounts, all of your services. But in most cases, you don't, you don't want to give access to everyone um, all of the services, all of the accounts. So with role level security, you're able to do a few different things and it, and it comes down to restricting access to the data that the users need to see, whether it's a product owner that needs to see only the services in their product, or maybe it's a department owner that only wants to see the services leveraged by that department. There's different ways that you can do that, um, whether it's by using tags or other logic in your data set to, to deploy this role level security. And a simple way to do that is just to tag the accounts with QuickSight users to deploy the automation to get the data and just attach that to your data set. Um, we see here an architecture diagram that kind of highlights how you can, you know, where you would set up that role level security. And without getting into much details here, the, the, the key point here is that you have your, your step number six, which is your RLS data set that is being used to restrict who can see what. And you apply this RLS data set to the to the CID data, to the CUR data, and that's going to kind of hone in and, and focus and allow those users to see only what they're supposed to see. There is, um, in the workshop, there is information on how to do this with step-by-step -step instructions. If you're interested in applying that role of security, I urge you to check out that workshop that's available there, and it goes through all the instructions that you need to understand what needs to be done. Next, we have tags. So tags are available um, in all, most of the AWS services out there, and you can implement those tags in the different services in programmatic fashions and manual fashions as part of your automation and for infrastructure. Apply those tags and make sure that these tags show up in your kudos, and then you're able to report on them. So at a high level, what it looks like is first you have to enable your cost allocation tags, then you can um, create those tags and add them to the billing application. And finally, it's about making sure that those tags show up in your Amazon, um, on your Athena query. When you deploy Kudos, it's gonna create some view, that's gonna create some tables, and you need to update that view to make sure that it includes those custom tags that you've added. Again, all there's a link right here for the workshop that covers going through step-by-step step and adding these tags. I also did recently write a blog that covers how to do these tags specific for QuickSight. So if you're looking to tag QuickSight users, there's a blog that we can share that includes this information. Alerts and reporting. So there's ways to be proactive about how you manage your costs. And that can be done with alerts. Well, I guess it's a little reactive, but it's it's giving you those um, alerts kind of when it happens so that you don't have to find those anomalies. You don't have to find what needs to be looked at, but you'll get these notifications. And we're leveraging the alerting feature directly in QuickSight. Um, you can set up alerts for different KPIs, for different values in pivot tables. Um, and these alerts will send emails to the users that you define. So for example, I can go into a specific KPI in one of the dashboards and create an alert for it. Or I can go to a specific cell in the pivot table and make an alert for it. And I can, I can define how I want that alert to be triggered based on a, on, a, on a number. And then if that alert gets hit, I'll get notified about it. The next um, really powerful thing that can be done, this is 
this how do we distribute these reports to users that maybe don't need to see the dashboard every day they don't need to slice and dice the data but they just want to see a summary every monday or every first of the month or every last of the month of what the spend was in specific services for that you can leverage the capability called paginated reporting in quicksight the paginated reporting will allow you to design and distribute pixel perfect paginated reports that include the information that you that the users need this can be scheduled to be sent via email it can include a pdf a multi-page pdf of all the data that they need it can also include csv it can include excel paginated reporting is a really important hot new feature in quicksight and i think that kudos is a great use case for maximizing that value of kudos maximizing the value of the data and getting the data to the right people at the right time in the format that they're looking for in this case we're talking pdfs we're talking csv we're talking excel data for the users that are asking for the data in that capacity and lastly i think this is where, where it really gets um customized and more powerful each for each individual organization is being able to bring in your own data bringing being able to like categorize costs be able to um, infuse some of that data with you know, your own chart of accounts, your own budgets, your own internal goals, and mapping it to your own organization. I think that's critical. I think that's, that's a must for all large organizations that are using this data. And it's, it's really how, how you wanna ultimately see the data because we can, we can try to build the best dashboards in the world for you to analyze this data, but every organization is different. Every organization needs to track things differently. So it's very simple to doing with QuickSight and then with the Kudos framework, you know, you have your data maybe in CSV, you have your data in other databases and S3 buckets. You're able to kind of, you're able to combine this data with the existing data in Kudos, ultimately creating new data sets and new visualizations or dashboards on top of these visualizations. So this adding third-party data is something I find myself helping customers a lot with, and there's a lot of value in it. All righty. We're going to do a quick little demonstration of a few things in the console. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the well-architected framework. I want to talk about how you get access to all this. So first, this is uh, the, the well-architected cloud intelligence dashboard landing page where you're going to find all of the different dashboard that I just chatted about. We have our foundational dashboards. For each dashboard, you're going to see the demo, which is the the sample dashboard that I shared with you. You're going to see specific details on the dashboard. You're going to see how to deploy it, and you're going to see how to provide feedback. And you'll find this for all the dashboards that are available in Kudos today, going down to even you know the new Azure dashboards or the sustainability dashboards that we have in place. Now, for each one, in addition to this, we have you know in terms of deploying it, when you click on the deploy button, it's going to take you to that workshop that breaks out. Um, a lot of the details on what kudos is it goes through how to you know how to understand what the dashboards are foundation advanced and the additional dashboard including the deployment options for each one we have alternate deployment options we have ways to you know some tutorials and additional information on how to use this how to share them with the organization update dashboard so this is something that i went through recently our team if we look at the change log for cid We'll see that you know, every month or every 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 few weeks we're changing things. The change log is quite busy with the different versions of Kudos, and um, you want to be a, be able to upgrade these. The team have built a very easy way for you to upgrade your Kudos, and it's all done through um, through the console. You can do it right in Cloud Shell, and it's about it's just running a few simple commands using this 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 um this application that can be installed via PIP that will manage the update for you. We have different demos and different videos here. So if, um, if, you're, if you've implemented Kudos a year ago, a year and a half ago, you love it, um, but you don't know that you're using, you, you, know, you know you're using an old version, you're not getting the most out of it. So we urge you all to upgrade to the latest version, make sure that it, um, make sure that it, it upgrades successfully and that you're leveraging all these new amazing sheets KPIs, et cetera, that are included in Kudos. Um, now, focusing specifically on QuickSight, the last version of Kudos has released a 
really cool quick site dashboard. So if I go in my kudos dashboard, I go and find the sheet called analytics. We'll see that it's uh, in its first iteration is focused on quick site. I think eventually it'll have additional analytics services that kind of go hand in hand with quick site to get your, your perspective on analytics. I could see there being information here on glue lake formation. Even some of the data warehouses, you know, data, data warehouse, data lake capabilities that are in maybe in other sheets, but be able to combine it all into one sheet to give you that holistic view. I think that's that's where, we're, where it's going. It started off with QuickSight. So some high level ways that you can optimize costs in QuickSight. First dimensions, you know, how many users do you have? How many authors? How many readers? And it provides a three high level recommendations that you can implement to reduce costs and optimize your usage. So looking at authors, um, should all authors be authors or some of them be readers? So this has um, a perspective on that. It gives you some perspective into the spice usage and are you using all the spice that you are, that you have acquired? Can you release some spice or reduce some costs? And also another option is an enabling auto, auto spice capacity, auto purchasing of spice capacity to simplify the management of spice. So these are some high level recommendations that we're putting here going through the visualizations you know you're going to see obviously your spend by account you're able to drill down in specific regions you see your spend by different services so you can see how much you're spending on alerts versus authors versus readers versus capacity sessions passing report all the different core quick site capabilities and add-ons are going to be broken out here so you can see the cost per each one and then going down into the nitty gritty, you're able to see the different, in this case, we're looking at QuickSight users. You see the different user, you see the different cost that that user is incurring, what account it's coming from. So here, I don't have any duplicate cost, I mean duplicate users, but if I had duplicate users, this would highlight it for me. So that's one of the methods of optimizing that we see here. So what's changed to allow us to get this lower grain of data? So I wanted to kind of quickly dig into what's changed. So um, there is a, uh, this is getting a little more granular, but I think it's important to highlight. There is a new, there's a column that was not available in Kudos previously called the resource ID. The resource ID, we take a look at, I'm gonna swap over here to the My Data Prep tab. The resource ID is used in this data set. This is my, my data set resource view. And I have um, this resource ID that gives us very specific cost and usage information. This resource ID applies to all the different services, including S3, including um, I have data zone, kind of just going through all my different, this is from my account. Um, the resource ID includes a detail, the resource that is consuming that cost. And then when it applies to QuickSight, we're able to see, for example, the username of, of the, the author or the reader that incurred that those session costs or that author costs. So that's the new level of grain that we're getting to. If you have passionate reporting, you're able to see the dashboard ARN that is creating those reports. If you have alerting, you're going to see the alerts on um, the dashboard ARN that is triggering those alerts. So being able to kind of see where the costs are coming from, be able to see who's doing what, track that cost and optimize, make decisions based on it. That's what we aim to do with these dashboards.